All right, I thought I'd give you guys a, a quick follow-up on a bait that I got that I just reviewed with the Mystery Tackle Box. This was the the sea worm that was I told you that smelled like the shrimp. And you can also see there I have the little tagalon blade on the bottom of it. Well, obviously it does work. I uh, just took this fish out of this heavy hydrilla bed there, just on the other side of it. I mean, he hit it hard. You can see the little blade there to have, a, have it anchored in the bottom of the worm. All right, let's unhook this guy quick and we'll let him go. Here he goes. On the worst for wear. Okay, here you can see what I was using, the sea spin. The Bruco, the soft bait. This is the one that smells like uh, the shrimp. They have it impregnated with something that really stinks like fish. And it was in the red. I'll show you how I have it mounted with the Mr. X. With that little finesse spinner bait blade. See how the little screw anchor just screwed into the tail there. And I have it on a regular Texas rig. I was just trying it out. It seems to work quite well pretty bad day as you can see it's starting to rain We're expecting a real bad thunderstorm soon so hopefully I'll get some more fish before then I'm trying video here although it's starting to rain now so I'm gonna show you how it works you can just see it there it's just a small little willow leaf blade and this worm is quite compact of course it's, little, it's got some forward weight to it because the tail, tail is skinnier in the head the blade doesn't give off a whole ton of vibration, but because it's a willow leaf, but it's got the gold. I mean, you can even see in the you can see the blade sticking out a mile. So visually, it has a lot of attraction. Uh, apparently, that bass liked it. You can see how thick the weed is here. So what I'm doing is real slowly swimming it. There's a hole right along here. There's a gap, and then where the rod tip is on the other side there, the weed starts again, and the fish took it right in the middle when I dropped it into that gap there. He, uh, he grabbed it just before it got to the hydrilla on this side. Now there's probably five foot of water here. And there's four and a half foot of hydrilla. So that, that hydrilla, you can see some of it's actually tipped out. So it's it's right on top of the water. And then there's a big deep hole here. The, the good thing with this is if you, you drop this worm, you can see here if I drop it in the water, the, the spinner bait blade will flutter on the way down. As it sinks, it's fluttering on the way down too, so. That's another good technique. If you get to a hole in the grass like that, you can stop it and just drop it and it'll it'll float right down the hole and it'll helicopter down. Sometimes they'll hit a lot of times they'll hit it on the drop. Alright, I think it's time to go home. I think I'm gonna get poured on. Well, this worm just got hit again. This time it wasn't a bass though, it was a small pike, I think. You can see the big bite. <laughs> he bit right at the tail, of course. He missed the hook. There's this one side of the bite. And there's the other side of the bite. He almost took the tail off it. Now what I'm going to do is bite that off and then re-thread my, my spinner back onto the bottom of it so I don't lose it. But he just bit behind the hook. The bass, it was funny, the bass bit the, the, the head of the bait and the little pike bit the tail of the bait. He went for the flash of the spinner.